you want, baby, yeah, ma. We should be closer than friends, uh, if you open uh, and take that hot road and hop in, uh. been a while it has not that long <laughs> how last, long has it been last week this is volume one and this is just a teaser if you're watching the video um, sorry we'd <laughs> like to give you the whole thing but you have to pay for that so you're just gonna have a few snippets and a bit of teasers and yeah maybe it'll be quite useful um, our course is uh, re reasonably priced so hit us up if you want to take the course yeah hope to see you soon and um, you can come and take a course with me and with Nick, and we'll have a good time with that. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's jump right in. Uh, Nicholas. Yes, sir. Uh, about teaching children, mm. what makes it so different from teaching adults? Uh, very, very different, Robert. Is it? It is very different, yes. Let's, let's challenge this. Okay, can mm. we, uh, what, what, what's the main difference? Uh, I would say the main difference is um, the way uh, that children learn compared to the way that adults learn. I see. Mm. Uh, classroom management, of course, is totally different. Okay. Uh, I guess also uh, planning and resources is also very different too. Okay. Um, I would say for me, those three things, and because I, for me, personally, I give um, uh, equal energy to put all, all of my lessons, whether right. it's adults or children. But I can imagine that for some people who mm -hmm. uh, teach in a more reserved way, mm -hmm. Um, which is fine, of course, everyone's uh, teaching style is different. Right. Uh, but uh, for children, um, mm -hmm. you know, a more uh, kind of active and energetic uh, approach is probably going to be received, uh, on average, better right. uh, than a more reserved I see. Uh, approach. So a more of an active, more involved... Yeah. You need to be more involved. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, so first of all, we have um, what, what are the major challenges for mm -hmm. teaching children? Um, well, as I said, for me personally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just classroom management, I see. Uh, understanding the uh, behaviors of children. So we're going to give you some answers to that. Hopefully we can uh, help you uh, overcome those challenges and, and actually not see them as so much as challenges anymore yeah. because you'll, you'll actually be able to mm -hmm. uh, handle them in a different way. Uh, here, here we have is a, a common thing that I, I hear a lot of people uh, <laughs> say yeah. about their child, their mm. children, even their own children, mm. and the classes is, a lot of uh, teachers I've met are afraid to teach children. Have you ever met anybody who's afraid to of teach course. children? I mean, I don't think that the, the word that they themselves would use would be afraid. Yeah. Um, I've heard things like, well, I I'm, don't teach children. I don't treat, uh, teach children. I'm nervous to teach children. Right. I don't um, have any confidence. I don't have any confidence. I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm not they would say afraid. I'm worried. Uh, I'm yeah. worried is also a common word. I'm worried that the kids will get out of control and I won't know what to do. Right. Um, but in essence, that is afraid, isn't it? Anything that you are, are feeling anxious about. Pretty much. It's I mean, fear. They're, they're, they're yeah. basically, they've never done it. Mm. Okay. So they don't, un and, and they don't understand it. And mm. they also think it's harder They think it's harder. Mm. A lot of people think it's harder or they think it's beneath them. Mm. Uh, I would say there's a lot of things with, with that. I don't choose children. And I, I mean, there are, some people can really teach children well, mm -hmm. some can't. Mm. I will say that there are some people who really, uh, but it's not, I think if they had the know-how that mm. they could do it. I think that know-how makes a big difference. And also frame of mind. So one of the first things that I hear a lot is, uh, they're little monsters. I've heard, mm. uh, I've heard teachers in the elementary schools call them like gangsters, mm. my gang, my, um, my monsters, mm -hmm. my little devils, like all pejoratives. Like mm -hmm. one thing I, I really, as a, as a person who works with children a lot, I really can't stand uh, pejoratives for mm -hmm. children in general. I think that that's a really bad mindset, first of all. So I, I would like it if people would not refer to them as monsters or any kind of pejorative, mm. because it's really, it's counterproductive. I know, yeah. that, I know that you mm. don't really think they're bad, it, you know, if you're out there saying, well, I, I, oh, that's me, I prefer it to them as, as my little gang or my little, you know... The, well, we do still feel like that sometimes. I right. know I have this, you know, belief from my childhood that you know, a child should do what they're told, because <laughs> that's what happened in my upbringing. 
sure thing. I mean, um, that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, and yeah. in my schooling, that was what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The task of the educator is to see that the child does not wrongly associate immobility mm -hmm. for good and activity for evil. So it would say, don't let children mm -hmm. think that activity is bad mm -hmm. and think that inactivity is good. Okay. Essentially, children, it's in their nature to move. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but their natural affinity for movement mm. is, is part of growing up because they need to express themselves through movement uh, because they need to learn how to move. Children have a real difficulty to keep still because it's not in their nature. Mm. Well, again, and we have this you know, negative um, social expectation that children should be quiet and well, we, you know, yes. we, we have the saying, you know, oh, he's, he or she's got ants in his pants. Right or her pants, right. uh, you know, meaning, oh, that's bad, they should be, right. they, should st they should stop moving, they should sit still. Right, we're, we're always trying to tell the child to sit still. Mm. And, you know, it, it, it's like fighting against gravity, is the way I say it. it mm. you're, you're fighting a losing fight, and it's going to take so much energy mm. for you to overcome that natural state of the child, mm -hmm. that you're, you're going to expend all of your energy doing that. So. What uh, I think is important is that you lean into mm -hmm. their movement, and how do we uh, use that in linguistic terms? Have you heard of TPR? Yeah. yeah. So uh, well, what, some people what, might not know what. Yeah. That what is, is TPR? Mm. It's a total physical response. Mm. So in, in the TPR, you're going to be using your hands. You're going to be making motion. Mm. You're going to be uh, really uh, active in what uh, you do. Same that, that you, um, approach that you would use if you were teaching uh, true beginner adults. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So that I mean, and and again, one of the things is because children are are already in the stage where they're still learning language, where they're still overcoming ambiguity, yeah. the, the TPR really is, is quite useful. Mm. So rather than keep your, your students sitting down nicely, why not get them up and uh, get them dancing with, uh, uh, with something? Mm. As far as behavior is concerned, mm. you're not fighting their natural behavior. Mm. You know, you're, you're working within their, their natural behavior. Mm -hmm. It is. So the key point there, activity is natural. Uh, Don't fight against it. Lean into it. Lean into it. And, and make it more active. Mm. I, I've had much better uh, results with kids by respecting them as individuals. Uh -huh. And respecting their intelligence. You know, it's yeah. really quite true. It's like they, there's one category of, of people on the, plan, mm. on, on the planet that really, <laughs> we could, in most countries, it's still legal to hit them if mm. you're their parents. Like, okay, I understand there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be against me on this one, but like, I've never had to hit my kids. Like, they, they cooperate, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. Again, it's another, another mindset. If you respect another person, you don't want them to obey you. Mm -hmm. You want them to cooperate with you. And so that's another point of respect. If you respect them and, and you understand that you are in a position where mm -hmm. you know more, it doesn't mean that you're not going to... Uh, you know, cooperate with somebody that you, that knows more and is a leader. Mm. Uh, they they they'll respect leadership. They respect it really easily. So a lot of people from our generation is, grew up in a generation where it's like children should be seen, not heard. Mm. Is kind of a thing that people used to say. Uh, you know, they were they've really uh, pushed the, the the point of the child down. Look, the, I'm not saying that children are particularly wise. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that they're particularly. Uh, more intelligent than, than, than adults. I'm not saying that at all. I'm, what I'm saying is if you don't teach them respect yeah. by respecting them mm -hmm. and, and treating them as equals, then how in the world are they going to ever treat anybody else as an equal? Yeah. Uh, they're not going to learn those skills. So uh, here comes the uh, first part. As I say, mm -hmm. uh, children are completely capable of complex thoughts and rational thinking. This is something that if you just mm -hmm. put that into practice and just try it, you'll notice that they really can uh, make a, a very good uh, attempt to be um, you know exactly what you want them to be, and they may get a more fulfilling experience out of something. It, every time, if you it, uh, every time I've ever dealt with a child and I, I tried to mm. deal with them rationally, the better off you'll do. So, in what in um, just as some examples, how would this be applied mm -hmm. applied to the classroom? 
uh, environment. It's, it's, it, instead of telling them what to do, just ask them. Mm. We don't even respect them for their own uh, you know, needs to go to the bathroom sometimes. Mm. So the way I, I look at it is that we have to really find that if we treat them with rational respect, then they're very keen to t treat us with rational respect. It's the basic respect that you would give to a, cli a client, mm. the, the basic respect that you would give to a co-worker, mm. the basic respect that you would give to uh, a colleague. Uh, this is the way that you need to treat the, the children. And if you do that, they will respect you in uh, in, in, in their way too. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that when I'm, uh, 100% this has always been the, the case in my, in my life is children generally don't have people around them who respect them. Generally mm -hmm. they're being told what to do all the time. If you're the only person that respects them, you'll be the only person they respect. <laughs> Uh, and it's been my advice to mm -hmm. everybody is just, you know, as soon as you respect their, their wants and their wishes, then you're going to be a, a lot better off. Uh, going on, it says the best way to improve your relationship with children is by respecting their interests. So mm -hmm. if you can respect their interests, then you'll really uh, do well with that. The mission of the teacher is to provoke intelligence and mm -hmm. to provoke amazement leading to curiosity. So if um. you can lead them mm. lead, lead them to have more curiosity mm. if you can expound on their curiosity and expound on their amazement about mm. things if and, you can, and encourage it yes as well. and encourage them mm. so you know if we can encourage them to think mm. about the world around them and to also to to perceive different things then we're we're in the right position do you remember your first tug of war I don't remember the first one, but I remember it them being quite exciting, positive experiences. I almost remember every last tug of war mm. I've ever been in. Oh. If you think about it, think mm. back on you know, like if you've ever. I remember. Tug of war. I, mean, I remember when. I yeah. remember when, but I don't remember you know specific because um, well, uh, that's a, um, a short, uh, <clears throat> shortish, longish time ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, um, so I've been involved in several tug yeah. of war, okay? Mm. And I remember, I remember the first one, I remember the last one, mm. I, I remember all of these uh, experiences with tug of war. And uh, it, the interesting thing about it, the, the most interesting mm. thing about the tug of war is that, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, a great experience because, um, you know, generally you have a winner and a loser. You remember mm -hmm. if you lose and you remember if you won yep. uh, and you remember how bad it felt to lose. And you remember maybe how good it felt to win. Right. Um, so those are very memorable experiences. And I would say in the other, these other ones, can you remember anything from a, a, a regular uh, day at school? No, but okay. I do remember teachers. Yeah, you remember teachers, but I you don't remember a, a particular day at school that like... Um, it's hard for me to remember anything that I, I did particularly. Tell you, yes, I did. I remember, mm -hmm. I remember a couple. And they were from a teacher who um, had a very, very unique uh, approach to teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we would do uh, maths questions, uh -huh. which involved um, uh, an insect uh -huh. um, on a, for example, what do you call it? A candy apple. Uh -huh. Okay, and we would think, how, how long would it take uh, the insect to eat this particular amount of oh, wow. the candy apple? So it was and an object is, lesson. This is a math class. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that kind of approach uh, to teaching, very creative, very imaginative. Right. Uh, and me being a very imaginative uh, person, um, you know, that has stuck in my mind. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I have one time where I remember a couple of specific things that teachers had, mm. had, had done. I remember that I had a biology teacher that mm. uh, he said, you know, he, he was explaining something to do with science. And he said, you can stand up, you can yell, and you can throw your book at me. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, that's, that you have the, right. the ability to do that. And he says, now, I might have a reaction if, if you do that. Mm -hmm. And you might not like my reaction, mm -hmm. but, you know, this is, this is the options that you have. And I don't really remember much other than that mm -hmm. from the class. There's another teacher I had that um, he, he was explaining uh, about uh, mm -hmm. um, Martin Luther King Day when I was in second grade mm -hmm. and I remember him talking about it and then I remember telling the, him telling us uh, like he was telling us about Martin Luther mm -hmm. King Jr. Uh, civil rights uh, um, activist in the United States mm -hmm. and then I remember him telling us and then they killed him 
And that was like the, the, the it was quite uh, shocking to me at that point. And that stayed with me for, for, you know, for a long time. That was my second grade teacher mm -hmm. uh, when I was in, you know, elementary school. But other than those small experiences, I can't really think of too many specific experiences where I really was, you know, in a class where I really learned something. No. Um, and that's what my point is, is so you have to really kind of build uh, experiences, you know, let the let memorable experiences. Memorable experiences. Mm -hmm. and, here, uh, John Taylor Gatto is another uh, great uh, the educator from the United States that uh, he said, mm -hmm. children learn what they live. And so you have to have lived experiences. Yes. If, you can, if you can make the, um, the classes that you have a lived experiences by adding a lot of novelty, putting new things into your class every time and adding object lessons like you were just explaining, mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to have a much better experience with it. And that's really powerful mm -hmm. because again, when the, when it, I've always made it this, mm -hmm. this, this uh, interesting thing that I mm -hmm. like to experiment, I like to tell people is like, what's the difference if I say, learn this, yeah. or you come to me and say, teach me this? Which mm -hmm. time are you going to get a better a result? Yeah. It's always better if you come teach me this yeah. because then the mind is prepared. So if you've mm -hmm. given them a little bit of a taste and they're really ready to, to go in and, and, mm -hmm. and, and ask, you know, then you're in the best situation ever. Mm -hmm. if, you get, if they're able to ask some questions and we're able to research together, teach them some research skills, mm -hmm. they're going to be a lot better off. And that's, again, they're learning what they live. They've lived, lived experience is something that they're really going to learn. Mm -hmm. Learn by... Um, we learn to do something by doing it. There is no other way. That's mm -hmm. what John Holt is uh, fam famous for saying. And, you know, I really believe that that's, you know, quite true. I mean, I, I can't mm -hmm. think of an instance of anything that I was able to learn from a book uh, and actually be able to do it. I could read a mm -hmm. book on jujitsu. I could read a <laughs> book on um, judo. Mm -hmm. I could read a book on karate. I could yeah. read all the books on, you know, the, about mm -hmm. martial arts or any sport yeah. and if I went up against somebody who mm -hmm. actually played the sport mm -hmm. in the actual competition, me having read way more books than this other person, yeah. who do you think would win in the altercation? The person that had the real practice or the person who read the books? This is not a trick question, is It's it? definitely not a trick question. <laughs> I would lose like crazy. Yeah. Children really love novelty. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a really fun game that it was really fun the first time or even the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to use that game like three or four times in a row. You want to have some novelty, something changing. Mm. Uh, and so activities, you know, you, you, if you use scientific experiments, if you mm -hmm. use things that are actually, uh, you know, that are going to be counterintuitive. Yeah. Uh, it will make the children really think because, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's, that's really a counterintuitive uh, thing. You know, I'm, uh, with magnets, things mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, what is it, chemistry. Mm -hmm. If you can use, you know, simple chemistry experiments, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a good chemistry experiment where you can crush a bottle with just the air. You know, you, you heat up some water, you put it in the bottle, you dump out the hot water, you put on the cap really tight, as the air cools down, it crushes the ah, bottle. Okay. Yeah. Th those kind of things, they, they really freak out. They're like, what is crushing this bottle? Mm. You know, and, and, and so, you know, you're saying the air, you know, uh, around the bottle, crush the bottle. And mm. it's just an amazing experience for them. Mm. So all of the things that you can do that are, that are some mm. kind of scientific experiment, mm. you know, they're really going to love it because they're going to be actually involved in it. Well, we've noticed, and please um, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. Sure thing. But we, uh, you know, after you know, talking to our um, teachers uh, pretty regularly, the experiment classes, the task based, those really kind of engaging uh, classes have been really popular. They the changed children. the entire mood mm -hmm. of the children. You know, it's like they might have hated the the other class mm -hmm. beforehand because they just weren't interested in what was being taught, but they yeah. always loved the experiments. So uh, it's one thing that's important we need to really understand is children love to learn mm. slash do new things. Mm. So novelty is really important and they, they really love to see and do new things. Now they like to repeat things if they're interested, if, mm. they're, if they show some interest, let them repeat when they can. You don't always have to have something new, but keep them on their toes. This is another thing that was interesting. I got this advice from a teacher way back when I first started my career. She said, 
keep the children on their toes. Mm -hmm. And that means that you, you can kind of make small changes and, and adaptations to the games that you, uh, that you use to make them really um, you know, right. more excited about them. Yeah. So one of the things, again, it's back to um, uh, John Holt, what he mm -hmm. was explaining a lot of times was play mm -hmm. is the key yeah. you know, to mm -hmm. children learning. And to for people learning, we 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 just we try to keep mm. them away from playing. We always say, "Don't play. It's not time to play. It's time to study." Mm. You know, and 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 that is that like it's something we heard when we were children. It's so antiquated when it comes mm. to the way that you know we actually should uh, approach uh, teaching because we we, we can do it. We you can get a whole lot more mm. cooperation if you're you know again you know, leaning into where the child is, is uh, most interest, lean into their interest and, mm -hmm. and help them through that. So I hope this is giving you a little bit more confidence in, in yeah. your ability to teach uh, and also to deal with mm -hmm. parents and deal with administrations. Um, the other one I want you to think about is, you know, uh, what was the main mm -hmm. thing that you can take away from this presentation? Mm -hmm. And I, I said that the main thing I've always taken away from the presentation is, I need to respect a child mm. uh, and respect their humanity and be able to, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, treat them with enough respect that they'll want to cooperate with me. Mm. Okay, so if we sure. summarize this into what I'm on main uh, point at the end here, mm. I think the, you know, respecting um, children as individuals mm -hmm. um, and respecting their needs. Uh -huh. I think you could probably encapsulate, you know, yes. this. Um, Meeting the child's course, needs. Yeah. They're your client. Mm. They're the person that's really, I mean, it's, it's mm. their, they're your responsibility. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I'm glad that you learned something. Yes. And uh, guys, I'd like to say thanks for joining us mm -hmm. and um, look forward to seeing you all again. Yep. Ta-ta.